On the Will in Nature is a work by German philosopher Arthur Schopenhauer, which builds upon the foundations laid in his seminal work, The World as Will and Representation. In this text, Schopenhauer aims to demonstrate that the principle he has identified as the ultimate metaphysical foundation of all existence, the will, is evident not just in human actions but throughout nature. Schopenhauer begins by reinforcing the idea that the will is the thing in itself, the ultimate reality beyond the world of appearances that he calls representations. This is a key tenet from his previous works. The will, according to Schopenhauer, is a blind, purposeless force that manifests itself in the natural world and in the actions of living beings. The will is not to be understood as willpower in the human sense, but rather as a universal drive or energy inherent in all things. He argues that the empirical evidence in various fields of science supports his philosophical assertions about the will. He discusses the congruence between his philosophical concepts and the latest findings of the natural sciences which, in his view, validate the idea of a will to live that permeates all of nature. Schopenhauer examines the way the will manifests in inorganic nature. He looks at forces like magnetism, electricity, and gravity, which were not fully understood in a modern sense during his time. He argues that these forces can be seen as expressions of the will. For instance, gravity acts without any visible connection or immediate cause, suggesting an inherent force driving matter. Even in the mechanical, unthinking processes of the natural world, Schopenhauer discerns the operation of the will. In the case of plant life, Schopenhauer sees the will's expression in growth and reproduction. He observes that plants strive for survival and propagation without consciousness, driven solely by an innate force. This, in his view, is the will at work on a more identifiable level as even the most basic organisms exhibit a drive to persevere and expand. Moving to animals, Schopenhauer argues that they are driven by instinct, which is a manifestation of the will. He points out that the behaviors we observe in animals, their patterns of hunting, mating, fleeing from predators, and so on, all point to an inner drive that governs their actions. They do not act out of reasoning, but are compelled by an innate force that pushes them towards actions that ensure their survival and reproduction. In humans, the will manifests not only in the form of basic drives akin to those observed in animals, but also in more complex ways that involve intellect and consciousness. Schopenhauer explores human motivation, aesthetics, and ethics, arguing that all are expressions of the will. As the most cognizant creatures, Humans experience the will most acutely through desire, frustration, and suffering when the will is obstructed. Our intellectual capacities allow us to recognize the will, but we are still inevitably bound to its service like all other creatures. Schopenhauer is keen to show that despite the apparent differences in the complexity of life forms, from the simplest to the most complex, there is a unifying force that is exemplified by his concept of the will. It moves all beings and can be seen in the operation of natural laws and phenomena. The philosopher also discourses on the relationship between causality and the will. He asserts that causality is simply the manner in which the will manifests in the representations, and thus, it is not an independent force, but rather a principle that helps us understand the operations of will in the phenomenal world. Another major assertion in On the Will in Nature is the idea that the will is a singular force that experiences itself subjectively through individual creatures. The will has no personality or consciousness, and its striving is without ultimate purpose or design. This leads to the conclusion that the operations of nature, including the cycles of life and death, are manifestations of the will's eternal struggle. One of the key implications of Schopenhauer's philosophy is the element of pessimism about the human condition. If humans are governed by an insatiable will, then there can be no lasting satisfaction or happiness. All pursuits are driven by a desire that, once fulfilled, is replaced by a new desire or a sense of emptiness. Thus, life is characterized by unending striving and suffering. In the realm of aesthetics, Schopenhauer suggests that the experience of beauty provides a respite from the constant demands of the will offering a temporary relief from the suffering that it causes. Art and aesthetic experiences afford us a way of stepping outside the relentless drive of the will 
and achieving a disinterested contemplation that can bring peace. From an ethical perspective, Schopenhauer argues that compassion stems from the recognition of the will in all beings, leading to a moral imperative that values empathy and kindness. Recognition of the universal suffering caused by the will leads to an ethics that calls for the alleviation of pain in others. Towards the end of the book, Schopenhauer contemplates the possibility of achieving a state of resignation, where one disengages from the will through asceticism and self-denial. Such a state, he suggests, might offer an escape from the perpetual dissatisfaction and agony that come with being a subject to the will. In conclusion, On the Will in Nature serves as a detailed exploration and expansion of Schopenhauer's philosophical system, wherein he seeks to demonstrate through empirical evidence that the will is the underlying force of all phenomena in nature. The will, as presented by Schopenhauer, underpins the existence of all beings and the forces within the universe. It manifests itself through both the inorganic and organic realms, driving the unceasing cycle of striving, suffering, and occasional respite that characterizes the lives of all creatures. Schopenhauer's insights into the will's manifestations invite a profound contemplation of the nature of existence, the structure of reality, and the human condition within the natural order.